All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. And what a cruise it is. So much has happened of late, it's difficult to enumerate all the exciting adventures which have befallen Captain Dalton, our young friends Sue Grange and Johnny Robbins, and all the rest of the crew of the Paul Parrot. We do know that just recently, good old Dickon, the one-legged sailor, evened the score with the giant blue whale, which many years ago was responsible for Dickens losing his leg. The crew had no sooner made the dead whale fast alongside ship and off to further adventures when Captain Dalton ordered full sail to the volcanic island of Galto. Anchoring just off the island, a party including Captain Dalton, Ezra Grange, Johnny, and Sue, is nearing land in one of the whale boats. Dickon, the one-legged sailor, and most of the crew are already ashore. First mate Wainwright and one of the crew have remained on board the Paul Parrot. Somewhere on this island of Galto, Ezra Grange hopes to find the vast treasure which rightfully belongs to him and Johnny Robbins. Oh, yes, Paul Parrot himself, the ship's mascot, seems to be the most excited of all as the boat nears land. <coughs> Hidden, Hardy. Ah! Uh, land it is, Polly. Galto Island and perhaps the lost treasure. Ah! Make her fast, my Hardy. Ah! Right you are, Polly. Make her fast, man. Ready for a landing. And who knows if this map we have is correct, the riches there may be in store for us. Oh, Mr. Grange, I hope the map is correct and we find what we came for. I'm sure we'll find it, Johnny. All right, all of you, jump out. The boat's beached safely. You first, Sue. Here I come. Oh, there. Now, now Mr. Grange. All right, there. Now, Johnny, come along, lad. Men, you'd better haul the boat farther up the beach. No use taking any chance of the tide coming in. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, hi, Captain Dalton. Oh, hi. Shiver me rigging. There's skull duggery afoot, Captain. Ah, ah, I pulled him, ladies. Ah. Now, what's wrong, Dickon? Who's causing trouble now? It's no who, Captain. It's a nit. What are you talking about, man? Calm yourself. It's old Smoky Mouth, Mr. Grange. The worst volcano in these here parts. I seen her on many a cruise. Do you think it's dangerous on this island, Dickon? Strike me pink, I do, miss. Don't get excited, Dickon. Old Smoky Mouth's much the same as other volcanoes in these islands. That smoke you see coming out of its mouth is almost constant. Been simmering like that for years, I suppose. But aren't volcanoes dangerous when they smoke? Not always. The ones that smoke all the time are not necessarily the most active or dangerous. But Smoky Mouth is such a large volcano. I'll bet it's the largest in the world. Oh, no, far from it. This one isn't half the size of the volcano of Fujiyama. Over 12,000 feet high she is, with a crater 500 feet deep. And if you walked around her mouth, you'd be walking two and a half miles. Aye, you're right there, Captain Dalton. I saw her with me own eyes, I did. When I was a lad, I, I shipped her on the horn, bound for the Orient. And, and when you get there, you can see old Fujiyama for miles, you can, sir. Oh, I like this. It's the first time I've ever seen a real volcano. Well, they're nice to look at from a distance. But I only hope we won't have to get too close to it, searching for the minerals. Aye, sir. But it ain't the smoke that I'm worried about. What then, Dickon? A short while ago, before you landed, some of the men and myself went closer to our smoky mouth to see what we could see. Did you see anything, Dickon? It worried what we saw that struck us queer, lad. Blow me down, Captain. It's what we heard. Well, out with it, man. What did you hear? As I was saying, sir, we got close to our smoky mouth. It looked peaceful enough, all right. But as we neared it, blow me down, as if it were a warning to us we wasn't wanted on the island. She started a rumbling that would have capsized a hook twice the size of the Paul Parrot. That must have been the funny sound we heard when we were leaving the ship. Yes, Sue. I heard it, too. We were so busy making ready to heave, too. I suppose I heard it, but paid no attention. Captain, Captain, there it goes again, sir. Hmm. I don't like the looks of it. Mm, nor do I, Dickon. But you can't turn back now, Mr. Grange. That old smoky mouth doesn't frighten me. Nor me, Ezra. I feel a lot safer with that volcano there than I did when that mean old testy was running loose. Aye, but he was a man, lass, and against any man there's chance for protection. Not so against an angry volcano once it starts on a rampage. Right you are there, Captain Dalton. Well, I'll go again and any man before the mast. A smoky mouth here, once she went on a spree, <laughs> it'd be too much for even old Dickon to manage. What do you think, Captain Dalton? Well, sir, there's no telling. We may be lucky and find out what, what we're after, and all of us back on shipboard with the bow pointed for home long before Smoky Mouth starts any trouble. If we're careful, it's worth a chance. It'll be a shame to come all this way only to turn back. But the treasure's yours and Johnny's here, and it's up to you. Say the word and we turn back. Say ahead and ahead it'll be. I say ahead, Ezra. And you, Johnny, what do you say? Ahead it is, sir. You're a brave pair, Sue and Johnny. Mr. Grange? Ahead it'll be then, Captain Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Grange and the men here will come with me. We'll join the other men up ahead. You, Dickon, stay behind with Sue and Johnny. But, sir, 
I'd like to come along if I may. And so would I. We're not going to stay behind. Now, listen, you two hearties. It's better this way. We may want a signal to you. You can make the second trip with us. Yes, now do as Captain Dalton says. He's in complete charge from now on, as I told him on the boat. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Grange. We won't be long. Blast me topsails. In all the excitement, I almost forgot about those two lovers, Al Testy and Red Mulhooley. Well, they're still chained up in the hold. I don't think they'll be able to get away real soon. Mr. Wainwright and one of the men stayed on board to make sure of that. Aye, but just the same, I'd feel a lot better when we drop them off at port where they'll get their just dues. If it was left to me, I'd like to do like the pirates do. I'd make the lovers walk the plank. Ah, yo, ho, ho, and a bottle of rum. Walk the plank, you lovers. <laughs> <laughs> you see me, Oddie? Old Polly knows what to do with him. I'll bet I'll test you and Red Mulhooly are sorry they ever tried to steal Mr. Grange's map of the treasure. Yes. I wonder what they're thinking about now that they know they can't get away. Yeah, and I can thank you, Al Testy, for the fix we're in. All your talk, Senor Mulhooly. For someday we may not be in chains such as these, and I do not soon forget such insults. Ah, you can't scare me, Al Testy. I wish you'd never seen your dirty face. Eh? If I was locked up in a land brig, I'd know how to get out. But here, halfway in the middle of the ocean, well, it's the first time I've ever been in a seagoing jail. I ain't just figured out how to break them. All of which reminds me, amigo mio, we should forget our quarrel. Perhaps we could devise some plan to make our escape. Yeah, I guess you're right, Altesti. Then, senor, we are friends once more. I guess so, only... Only that there is still one chance that we may gain what we are after. What do you mean, Altesti? Justice, amigo. This morning, when the stupid sailor they call Dickon brought us our food, he began his boasting again. Yeah, blast these ornery hide. If I could get my hands on that salt, One I... moment, my friend, you may yet have the opportunity. What do you mean? Justice. From what he said this morning, I would say that we are anchored just off the island which holds the treasure according to the map I tried to get from Senor Grange. So... so that means that the ship will be here for some time. Dickon made the mistake of telling me that it would be useless to try to escape. For they have left first mate Wainwright and one man to guard us while the others went ashore. And that means if we can get away from these chains we're in... We'd have a good chance to overpower Wainwright and the other sailor on deck and make our getaway. But... But what, senor? Where'd we go if we did get away? To the island, of course, stupid one. Where, after all, we may be able to get hold of the treasure that Grange and the rest of them are after. Say, that's right. Maybe we could. Uh, but what then? We can't get back to the mainland in a whale boat. My friend, once we are in control of the treasure, it will be an easy matter to bring the crew to our side. We could leave Grange and his friends to rot on the island. Say, maybe we could do that, Altesti. Maybe we could do that. Now, here is what we do. These chains that hold us are old and rusty. A few blows with something heavy would break them loose. Yeah, if I could only find... Wait a minute, Altesti. Look over there with that whale oil cask. A loose iron brace. Ah, I see it, my friend. If you can only reach it. I'll see. <coughs> maybe I can stretch out with my feet and move it over this way. <laughs> Ah, uh, that is it, senor. One more inch, and you have it. I uh, got it. Now I can move it over near us. Ah. Nice work, amigo mio. Now, first, before we try to free ourselves, we must plan our attack upon the two sailors so that we will not fail. Yeah, that's right. We can't fail now, Tusty. Now, here is what we do, senor Red. The two men who are above, watching that we do not escape. Jameson! Jameson! Aye, aye, Mr. Wainwright. Be right there. Jameson, you thinking about time to take a look at the two rats we have in chains below? Rats they are, sir. I'll go and have a look, but I don't think they'll be able to cause any more trouble. That last run-in they had with the captain took all the fight out of them. Ah, so we are rats, ah. Perhaps we are, but smart ones, ah. Now, Tusty, how did you two lovers get loose? Perhaps in due time we will find out. In the meantime, Senor Wainwright and you two sailor, I would advise you not to try anything you'd be sorry for. You see, I have this gun, which Senor Grange was good enough to leave in his cabin, pointed straight at your arm. Ah, finish the buzzards off now, Testy. That'll be two less we have to worry about. In due time, friend Red, all in due time. You must control your bloodthirsty impulses. I must do what? Oh, never mind, Senor. Those ropes lying on the deck, you see them? Yeah, I see them. Get them, then tie these two gentlemen very securely. You'll never get away with this, you scum. Captain Dalton will swing your boat from the yard under the pulpit and let the sharks nibble your black hearts out. I think not, my friend. Red, tie them tightly. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. The sailor's tied up so he'll not get away. Now I'll take our Wayne right here. But I'd much rather cut his heart out. Senor Red, remember what I said. Hurry, we have much to do before we finish. Nah, they're both tied up. Take out your swab, Wayne right? Yeah. My holy, what did I tell you? No, oh, I couldn't resist laying the swab low. He made a bad mistake when he called us rats. It seems he made a mistake when he called me rats, Senor Red. 
but I believe he was correct about you. What do you mean by that, Alchester? I mean this, my friend Red. Remember when we were below in chains, you referred to me as Dirty Face. And if you remember further, my friend, I said I would not soon forget your insults. But I'll test you. We, we said we'd forget our quarrels. Yeah, I said we'd forget our quarrels. But I did not say I would forget your insults. What you gonna do? A few moments ago, you mentioned cutting someone's art out. That gives I'll test a fine idea. But it will be your art that is cut out, if any. You can't do this, I'll test you. you. need me to help you get the treasure from Grange and Captain Dolph. No, no, senor, I think not. Your clumsiness would be put in the way. You have blundered enough already. I do not intend taking any more chances with your round. Keep away from me, Altesti. With that gun, keep away, I say. The gun I do not intend to use on you, senor, but this knife. Ah, that is different. So, dirty face, eh? Huh? Just mm. keep your distance, you swab. Uh. I should have known you'd try something like this. Get back now or I'll throw this belaying pin. Will you ask for it? Ah, you missed me, senor. Now it is my turn to throw, and I will not miss. In one moment, dog, this knife will pierce your arm. <laughs> I, I thought you had me that time, but, but seeing your dirty face, you missed too. Now I'm going to break you with my bare hands. Let go of me, yeah. Dog. Let go of me. Yeah, I'll let go of you. Over the rail of this boat, Mr. Dirty Face. I got you now. But look first. Look over the side of the boat. Do you see those fins upon the surface of the water? Fins? Sharks. Yes, yeah, sharks. And here goes some food for them. They look kind of hungry to me. Oh, senorita, my friend, you can't do that to me. I can't, no. eh? Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the end of the troublemaker Al Testi. But what about Red Mulhooly? What will his next step be? And that volcano, Smoky Mouth. Will Ezra Grange, Captain Dalton, Sue, and Johnny find the mineral treasure before Smoky Mouth erupts? Or before they have more trouble with Red Mulhooly? We hope so. But we'll have to follow the transcribed adventures of the cruise of the Paul Parrot very closely to find out all these things. Be sure to listen to the further adventures in the search for the vast mineral treasure on the island of Galto with Captain Dalton, Ezra Grange, Sue, Johnny, Dickon, and all the rest as we unfold the tale of the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs>